By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between two beta, alpha beta, I should say, lovers of the game. We're looking at Neil versus Plague Doctor, and they're playing a game of core set magic, so their decks or a completely alpha and beta and I'm just really looking forward to show you this match because their decks are really cool. These are two players and you know I feel very connected to their philosophy because these are two players that say I am playing old school magic because I want to play the cool cards. I want to cast a wall of stone. I want to play a Kelden Warlord. I want to play a Crow Worm etc etc right. So these are really true lovers of magic and my main reason to start playing old school, start replaying old school I should say, um, is because I wanted to cast certain cards, cards I remember from my childhood, cards that I thought were just so cool, you know, and, and art played a big role in that and just the feeling that you have with the card, the nostalgia. I didn't return to uh, playing magic because I wanted to win tournaments or because I wanted to uh, make the best deck or because I wanted to solve the format, you know. I really wanted to play old school magic because I just love the art, love the card, love the feel of that 93, 94 magic, if you know what I mean. And I kind of feel that Neil and Plague Doctor, they have the same feeling. And when you look at their decks, I've got lovely deck photos that I'll show in a minute. You, you know, you'll also get that vibe. I'm sure you will. So we've got Neil who is playing red and black and just he's playing awesome cards like Fire Elemental and Howl From Beyond and you know, false orders. I just, both players are playing false orders, by the way. So that's super cool. Looking forward to see that card in action. Um, and he's taking on Plague Doctor, like I said. And Plague Doctor is playing a three color deck. He's playing red, uh, black, and green. And again, just, he's playing Camouflage. I don't even, I I don't think we've had Camouflage on the channel before, which is a super confusing card. So I'll try to explain it in the deck deck, but that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be a lot of fun trying to explain Camouflage. Anyway, uh, these are the two decks. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I would first like to mention that, as always, you can also choose to go to the games first, check out the deck decks later. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And talking about the description, in that same description, you can also find a link to my Patreon page. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a supporter. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks. Okay, and now that that's all out of the way, we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Neil. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Neil. So this is a black and red. And it's I kind of called it mid-range because what else can you do really? It is kind of mid-range, isn't it? You've got some cheaper creatures, Mons, Goblin, Raiders, Iron Claw, Orcs. They've got some more expensive creatures like, you know, your Earth Elemental, your Fire Elemental. And then you've got your creatures kind of in the middle, your Stone Giants, your Keldon Warlords. I mean, this deck is just full of creatures and cards that I would love to cast. It's just, it's such a fun list. By the way, I think they're playing Singleton. I mean, look at it. There's there's not a single double card in here. So is it Alpha Beta Singleton that they're playing? Could be. We'll have to wait and see until we have a look at the list of Plague Doctor to know for sure. But anyway, it looks like they're playing Singleton. And there are just some really cool cards in here. I think one of my favorite cards in this deck to cast would be Keldon Warlord. I think it's such a cool card. It's two red and two to cast. And the power and toughness of the Warlord is equal to the amount of creatures under your control. So it's kind of gross during the game. The bigger your army, the bigger the Warlord. And that's very flavorful. flavorful. That makes sense. This used to be a card that saw a lot of play in Goblin decks. Because with Goblins, you usually just had a lot of, you know, Goblins running around. And then you had this big, fat Keldon Warlord. Um, you don't, it hardly sees any play now, but I still think it's a, it's a really cool card. So I'm looking forward to see that hit the board. There are also some kind of obscure cards that you don't see a lot, but are very, very cool. Um, I'd like to discuss two of those. The first one is Jade Monolith. J uh, Jade Monolith is an artifact for four. Then, uh, you can pay one. You can do it as many times as you want. It's a poly artifact. And it reads, the next time a source of your choice would deal damage to target creature this turn, that source deals that much damage to you instead. So it's basically a way to save your creatures, but then of course you do take all the damage. But usually, I mean, if you've got a lot of life, and, and there is an Iron Star in here, so he's got ways to gain life. Um, <laughs> also a Soul Net, so I mean, although if he wants to get life with Soul Net, he, he has to let his own creature die, unless of course a creature of the opponent dies. Ooh, this is actually some kind of nice synergy. So what you could have is a situation where you attack with, let's say your 
your hill giant and your opponent blocks it on their war mammoth, both creatures would die. But then you can use uh, your Jade Monolith to save your, um, your hill giant. So you take three damage. The war mammoth dies. You can activate your soul net and at least gain a life back. So you only lose two life. I mean, that's kind of okay, isn't it? That's kind of a, a combo synergy situation. I mean, it would be cool to see that working. And then, of course, you get your Scavenger Ghoul, who will get counters as well. Okay, this is kind of, this is kind of fun. I think this deck is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, another card I want to discuss is False Orders. False Orders is one of those cards that hasn't been reprinted after Unlimited. It's a card you don't see often, but it can actually make a creature unblockable. It's an instant um, that reads, Cast this spell only during the Declare Blocker step. Remove target creature defending player controls from combat. Creatures that was blocking that had become blocked by only that creature this combat become unblocked. You may have to block an attacking creature of your choice. So this is really a nice way to maybe, you know, kill a creature of your opponent that you really want to kill or to get that final blow in with your false orders. I mean, combine this, for example, with a crawl worm and a berserk and a giant grove and then you play your false orders to make sure that it'll get through. While I'm saying this, by the way, I'm realizing that, oh yeah, because of Berserk, it gets trampled, so it probably doesn't really matter. But you kind of know what I mean. False Orders could be quite useful. Also, maybe nice in combination with um, uh, with a Bull Lightning to protect it from first strike blockers. That could actually work. That would be quite cool. Anyway, this is the deck of Neil. It's a super cool list. I'm really looking forward to see this deck in action. Now, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Plague Doctor, and yes, yes, it is a singleton match. Look at it. It's beautiful. I really didn't realize it until I uh, had a closer look at these deck photos. Very, very cool. Um, and here, again, we see three colors instead of two, right? So also, uh, we see black and red, but the added color here is green. And I think it's going to be quite good, because green gives you access to regeneration. I think in this matchup, regeneration could be very valuable. It's an en enchant creature. For one green and one, you put it on in a creature, then the creature has pay one green, regenerate it. And I think that's that's quite strong. Um, I'm also really liking the Royal Assassin in here. That's going to be very, very good. So the Royal A1-1 one, one for two black and one. And it's a classic, of course. Tap it to destroy target tapped creature. So it's super good. Um, talking about creatures, I love the Lord of the Pit in here. That is just going to be awesome. A 7-7 seven, seven Trampler flying and of course during your upkeep you have to sacrifice another creature other than lord of the pit it needs food uh, and if you don't you take seven damage so i mean that's quite risky you just gotta gotta keep feeding it there are a lot of creatures in here i think i'm sure they'll love a grizzly bear like really a yummy yummy big bear i think it would love that not quite sure if it would like a hill giant as much i think giants they don't look very appetizing to me. What we do see in this deck, by the way, is a really nice combination between Lord of the Pit and Granite Gargoyle. Read the flavor text on Granite Gargoyle. It refers to a cookbook. So, I mean, this is ideal food for the Lord of the Pit. Um, there is a card in here that I really want to discuss. And I'm actually going to look it up right now. The card name is Camouflage. And uh, it's, it's just this weird card. I'm going to read the current Oracle text. And then let's just see if we understand what actually happened. So it's an instant for one green. It reads, cast this spell only during your declare attacker step. This turn, instead of declaring blockers, each defending player chooses any number of creatures they control. Okay, so I guess they choose the defending player and divides them into a number of piles equal to the number of attacking creatures for whom that player is the defending player. Creatures, those players... Control that can block additional creatures may likewise be put into additional piles. Wow, this is complicated. Assign each pile to a different one of those attacking creatures at random. Each creature in a pile that can block the creature that pile is assigned to do so. Piles can be empty. Wow. Okay, so I guess you're using this as a defending player? Let's see, this turn, instead of declaring blockers, each defending player chooses any number of creatures they control and divides them into a number of piles. So the defending player chooses any number of creatures they control. Okay, so I guess you, you cast this when you are the attacker, not the defender. Defender. So you're attacking and you already know that there are some unfavorable blocks for you. So the defender has the upside here, right? But then you cast Camouflage, and all of a sudden your defender has to, instead of declare blocks, if they want to block, they can only block at random. So they have to turn their cards around, I guess, and maybe throw a dice or something to decide what's going to block what. I mean, this is, this is crazy. 
I know the card. It's in my binder. I think I've played it a few times as well, but I can't really remember what we did. Or maybe I just didn't draw it because I only own one. So I only played it as a singleton in some matches. But yeah, Camouflage, completely weird, super cool, amazing card. And I am praying to the magic gods right now that we get to see this in action. So Plague Doctor, if you draw it, just use it. Show it to the viewers. I'm so Show it to me. You know, I'm just so looking forward to see Camouflage in action. You know what? After discussing Camouflage, we're done. We're done with the deck decks. I just want to see it in action. Let's go to this match. I mean, this is going to be so much fun. Alpha, Beta, Singleton, baby. Game number one, here we go. Neil on the right is on the play. He's playing black, red, and uh, Plague Doctor is playing black, red, and uh, green as well. So three colors for him. Both players playing singleton, alpha, beta only, starting with a mountain, both of them. Let's see what Neil can do in turn number two. There's a swamp. Bring on the Iron Claw Orcs. Yep, there's Iron Claw Orcs, 2-2. Two, two. The Grizzly Bear of Green. Plague Doctor has a quick response, it seems. Wow, Bolt! Bolting down to poor Iron Claw. And now it's Plague Doctor's turn. Of course, uh, Lightning Bolt in instant, so he could do that in, uh, in instant speed on the end step of Neil. No mana for Plague Doctor, it seems. That's brutal. Passing the turn, oh, that's bad. Let's hope that Plague Doctor can find a land next turn. Let's first see what Neil can do. There's land number three for him. Ooh, playing more stuff, it seems. There's a race dead. Oh, <laughs> getting back the Iron Claw. Yeah, Iron Claw power. Playing out the Iron Claw orc. Passing the turn back here. Okay, there's a land from the top. I'm happy with that. Hopefully, Plague Doctor can uh, play something out. Maybe find a green next turn. That would be quite nice as well. A good forest. Tapping a black. There's a dark ritual. And there is a hill giant, a 3-3. That's a great blocker for the Iron Claw and also a great attacker. Remember, Iron Claw Orcs cannot block any creatures with uh, power greater than one. So you can just swing in with the hill giant next turn, unless, of course, Neil can cast something here. He is playing with the Wall of Stone, for example, so he could cast that one. Tapping three. What are we going to see here? Is it going to be that wall of stone? Nope. It's a uh, ooh, stone ring. That is very painful. Taking care of the, the red source there. So uh, Plague Doctor already low on lands. The stone ring is pretty brutal. Okay, there's a forest from the top. So he is finding the lands now. That's quite good. Attacking with the 3-3. Three, three. Neil dropping to 17. No follow-up play though for Plague Doctor it seems. Exactly. No grizzly bears for example. Just a pass. There's a second swamp, so five lands already for Neil. There's the attack with the 2-2. Two -two. Plague Doctor dropping to 18, tapping a black here. There's a soul net. And a pass turn. Could have used that soul net earlier when there was that bolt on the Iron Claw. Plague Doctor attacking again. I mean, that hurts, you know. That's damage number six, six damage in total, I mean, now for the Hill Giant. There's a weakness being played on the Iron Claw. Oh man, that Iron Claw is having a tough time. It got bolted, then it got raised from the dead. Now it's got weakness. You know, it's an 0-1 now. I think the Iron Claw actually doesn't mind being an 0-1. I mean, they're kind of uh, these scaredy cats anyway. They don't want to attack or anything. They just want to stay home, do nothing. So being an 0-1 probably suits the Iron Claw. Tapping six, there's an Obsanius Golem. 4-6 Vanilla. This is a huge problem here for Plague Doctor. I wish, uh, I think he now wished that he would have kept the weakness. Could have played the weakness on the uh, Obsanius Golem. Then it would have turned into a 2-5. Uh, There's a Swamp now for Plague Doctor. I mean, he needs a red and I can't... Oh, he is attacking! Does he have something? Maybe a Giant Growth in hand. If you're Neil, are you going to block here? He is going to block. Are we going to see a giant growth? No, it was a bluff from the Plague Doctor. Oh, that's unfortunate. It was a bluff. Going to tap three as a follow-up. Oh, man. Yeah, this is not really going to help him. Although it is, it will give him access to, to red mana again. 
But yeah, Neil attacking here for four. So Plague Doctor got to drop to 14. Yeah, and now, and now the game could be over quite quick. Wow, more pressure on the board. A Stone Giant, a 3-4 creature. Oh, and this is a combo, Dredge, Dredge Skeleton. So one of the things Neil can do is give the Dredge Skeleton flying with the Stone Giant, but then it's destroyed at the end of the turn. But of course, the Dredge has a regeneration, so you can regenerate it. So that's quite funny. So another 1-1 one -one here being played out by the Plague Doctor. The Nettling Imp, not really useful here. Could be used as a chump blocker, I guess. And I mean, there's now 7, 8 damage on the board. Look at that. Look at, at Neil go. You're attacking full force. There's probably the chump on the Obsanius Golem. Going to take 4 more damage. Going to drop to 10. It's looking really bad here for Plague Doctor. And he's going to gain a life from the Soul Net Neil here because the uh, Netly Imp, of course, dies. So Neil, I mean, it's looking really good for Neil. He's on 15. He's got way more lands, way more creatures. Only one card in hand. But um, yeah, he's really dominating this game at the moment. I think first uh, point of business for Plague Doctors play a mountain and hopefully something, some, some kind of good blocker. Who's going to make a mountain here? Oh, it's so nice to see this card in action. Okay, there's a disintegrate. <laughs> I mean, he can disintegrate for one onto the drudge, I guess. Right? He can kill the drudge. That's something. I believe he needs to tap the, um, the green mana for that as well, right? What's that card called again? Prismatic Star, right? That's the name for it. I think it's two and tap, and then you get any color of mana. So you can make a red source, and then he taps the green for the 1x. Anyway, it's not quite relevant at the moment. You know, he's still taking seven. It's still looking very bad for him. He's going to drop here to four. Okay, there's this cave zombies, two, two vanilla. Plague Doctor probably starting his final turn passing here. Back to Neil and Neil swinging in for the win. No fog. Nope. There's the win here. Neil winning a game a number one. But uh, how much fun to see these cool cards in action. Obsanius, Golem, Stone Giants. I mean, I love seeing all these cards. Players are going to shuffle up right now. They don't have any sideboards. And we're going to go to game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So, of course, now Plague Doctor on the play after losing that first game. Starting with a Forest. And I don't think there's a turn one for him with the forest. Doesn't play with Lana Elves, I believe. Passing the turn to Neil. Neil does have a one drop. Mons Goblin Raiders in the house. 1-1 one, one, Vanilla. Summon Goblin. Classic, of course, to go together with Goblin King. Plague Doctor here going through his cards. Hopefully he can find that second land. There's the second land. A Swamp. Does he have a Grizzly Bear? This would be a great blocker against the uh, Mons Goblin Raiders. Passing the turn, though, so no uh, Grizzly Bears for him. Passing the turn to Neil. Let's see what Neil can do in his second turn. There's a Swamp for him as well. Can he find an Iron Claw Orc again? First attacking here with the 1-1 Mons Goblin Raiders. And there is a second play. There's a Drudge in the second main. So just a lot of creatures from Neil in the first game and now again in the second game. But now Plague Doctor has all his lands assembled. There's a Dark Ritual. We're going to see something big. Tapping five. Oh, thank dear vampire. This is huge. Four, four flying creature. Oh, this is a big problem for Neil. All of a sudden, he went to going kind of okay to a super bad position. He needs to find a way to get rid of the Sengir. I mean, you cannot play your Terror on it, so you need something else. Oh, an Earthbind. I like the Earthbind because now it doesn't have flying anymore. And, of course, he can block it with the Drudge. Wow, this is quite cool. So, yeah, it's now just a 4-4. Four, four. does have 2 damage on it still. So, if Neil has, for example, a Bolt, he could kill it. Maybe he's thinking about it. Attacking with both. Wow, very aggressive magic here. If you're a Plague Doctor, what are you going to do? I mean, I would be tempted to block the Goblin. And yes, it's a risk. Maybe Neil has a way to deal that extra point of damage. Yeah, Plague Doctor not taking the risk. Going to drop to 17. Also knowing that, of course, this turn, because the Drudge is tapped, he can attack for 4. 
So very aggressive magic here from Neil. I wonder what card he has in hand. Perhaps he had one card in hand to to kill the uh, the vampire if Plague Doctor would have decided to block one of the two creatures. Anyway, Plague Doctor attacking for four. Neil dropping to 16. There's a tap for three. Ooh, Granite Gargoyle. And I mean, Plague Doctor is really kind of drawing nicely. Missing a land drop, though. That's a bit unfortunate for him, but... He does have all the colored mana and he's playing out some very, very strong creatures. That 2-2 two -two flyer is looking quite good as well. Can fly over to Drudge. Neil here tapping 3 red. What are we going to see? Ooh, there's a Hurloon Minotaur. I love the art of Hurloon Minotaur. Art by Ansematics. Absolutely love it. It's a 2-3 creature vanilla. You also used to see that art on the revised uh, boxes. I remember that. Let's see what else Neil can do. I think if you're Neil, all you can do really at this point is pass the turn. And that's a problem, obviously, because that means that Plague Doctor can just attack with the 2-2 two -two Flyer and, and put Neil on 14 next turn. But uh, it looks like he's a little bit in the tank. Nope, passing the turn. I thought maybe he's finding some kind of line, but passing here back to Plague Doctor. Finding land number four, three cards in hand for him, it seems, and three cards in hand for Neil. If the die over there are correct, of course. 17 life for Plague Doctor, 16 for Neil. Tapping a green and a black here. There's a regeneration. Yeah, that's just such a good card. I think, I think enchant creatures in this format are quite good. There's the attack. Attacking with both of them. Okay, wow. Quite surprised because Neil can just block with the drudge and regenerate. And I don't think you get a counter. So taking two here. So a little bit surprised by this attack by Plague Doctor because now Neil can attack for, uh, for four or just three. Could also choose to keep the Drudge at blocking duty and then attack with the Hurloon and the Goblin Raiders, deal three damage to Plague Doctor, put him on 14. That both players would be on 14 if it decides to do that. There's the attack exactly, just gonna slam in for three. It's kind of a free attack here. So he's gonna drop to 14. Four lands, untapped for Neil. Passing the turn back to Plague Doctor. But it's still looking quite good for, uh, for Plague Doctor, of course. Still has the 2-2 Flyer that he can just use to keep dealing damage. He's got a big regeneration creature in the form of Sangir Vampire, so uh, that's all good. Attacking for two here, putting Neil on 12. Ooh, oi, 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 the often troll. Again, a good creature because it has regeneration. 2-2, two, two, 1 red, regenerate. Doesn't have red open at the moment, but for the next turns could be good. And then I guess Plague Doctor could consider attacking with the Troll and the Sengir next turn, although Neil has good blocker, so I guess that's not going to be very beneficial. Here we see the uh, Ogre, the 2-2 two, two creature. And passing the turn. So I just really love to see these classic... You know, creatures being played out like Hurloom Minotaur and the Mons Goblin Raiders and stuff like that and, and seeing regeneration in action. It reminds me of uh, my early days into Magic where you would buy a starter deck, right? You had 60 cards and that would be the start of your deck and you would play with these cards a lot, actually. Look at this Plague Doctor attacking with everything. I'm a little bit surprised about this because I don't think it's going to be good for Plague Doctor. So we see the Drudge here blocking the Sengir, probably the Hurloon taking on the uh, Often Troll. And that means that Plague Doctor has to invest a red mana to regenerate the Often Troll to keep it alive. Pretty sure he's going to do that. Or does he have other options? I mean, what could the reason be for him to attack here with the two regeneration creatures? Maybe he forgot that the Hurloon Minotaur is a 2-3 and not a 2-2. Tapping three mana. What are we going to see here for three? Oh, there's the star again. It's Prismatic Star, isn't it? And we, we should see here, by the way, just a little correction here. Plague Doctor, of course, should have paid the red to regenerate the often troll and then use, for example, the forest here to play out that Prismatic Star. But I guess both players are fine with it, as is. And we see Neil here tapping a red. There's a soul net. I mean, Solnet could maybe extend it a little bit here for Neil, you know, gaining a life maybe with Solnet one or two that gives him an extra turn because so far only the uh, the Granite Gargoyle is really the only creature that's, uh, that can deal damage here to Neil. There's the attack for three. 
putting Plague Doctor on 11. And he's now untapping. Let's see what he can do. I mean, I would just keep attacking with the Gargoyle, keep your two regeneration creatures on blocking duty. I mean, it's boring. You know, you want to put everything sideways all the time. I get it, but I think it's really better exactly to just keep them on blocking duty. There's the attack with the Gargoyle. Neil now dropping to eight. Ooh, using the Prismatic Star. I've never seen this star, like, doing so much <laughs> in a match. I love it. I sometimes see it being used when we play old school uh, EDH, right? We play, like, with 100 card decks and just do ridiculous stuff. Then I see the star sometimes, which is great fun. Oh, look at this. We see Royal Assassin hitting the board. So he's making a black man, I guess, with the Prismatic Star. Don't you have to tap it or not? Oh man, I need to have a look at this card again. Anyway, Royal Assassin, really, really, really good. Exactly, it has to tap the star. Royal Assassin, tap, destroy targets, tapped creature. I mean, that's just insane. And what he could consider doing next turn is attacking with his two regeneration creatures. And then Neil probably wants to block with their drudge because if you regenerate, the creature gets tapped and then he can kill it with the Royal. Ooh, tapping here, four for a scavenging ghoul. So Scavenging Ghoul is a 2-2 creature, and uh, when a creature dies, at the end of the turn, it gets a... Uh, is it called a Scavenging Counter? It gets a counter on it, and you can remove a counter from the Ghoul to regenerate it. So it kind of has regeneration in a weird way. I just remember that I thought the card was quite bad, because you would pay 4 for a 2-2 creature. That was kind of my opinion as a kid. Uh, attacking with the Gargoyle, putting Neil on 6... Giant Spider, yeah, I mean, Plague Doctor is drawing really the good cards for him. There are a few cards in his deck I still hope to see, by the way, like Camouflage, of course, is number one. I really hope to see that card in action, but also Lord of the Pit would be quite cool. Uh, Neil now on six, by the way. So Neil is really in a tough spot. At least he won the first game, so it looks like we are going to go to game number three, but let's see if he can do something. Oh, there's a Dwarven Warriors. That's quite interesting. 1-1 one, one creature, and you can tap it to make target creature with power two or less unblockable. And the cool thing is, after that, you can, um, you can play spells or do things that would increase the power level of that unblocked creature. So it's a great card in combination with Dragon Whelp, right? Because that's a 2-3, you can make it unblockable, and then you can pump the, the, the Whelp. So it's a, it's a classic combination, actually, in, uh, in the early days of Magic. I saw it a lot when I was a little Tim, people playing uh, Dwarven Warriors together with Dragon Whelp, or creatures with Fire Breathing on it. That's another way that people would uh, use the Dwarven Warriors. Anyway, Plague Doctor now taking his turn. Newell on six. So perhaps he's thinking about doing an all-out attack. I, I would just be, maybe boring, but I would just be conservative. Attack with the Gargoyle, put Neil on four. I mean, if he attacks with his entire army, and then, of course, he keeps a royal at bay, I, I guess. He has the two regenerators. I mean, he could consider doing it. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, I would also attack with... Why not attack with the Sengir? I would go with the Sengir for sure. Because now you're probably going to do Herloon on the... Or on the spider or on the, uh, the troll. And then... You would just chum block maybe with Goblin Raiders, one of the creatures. Yeah, Goblin Raiders on Giant Spider, I guess. It dies, and he also gains one life, goes up to seven. And now he takes two damage, so in the end he's on five, I think. Probably that's what they're discussing at the moment. Yeah, so he ends up on five. So whereas if you would have just attacked with the Gargoyle, he would be on four. And I think if you also would have attacked with the spider, you would have at least killed another creature on the side of Neil. It does mean he would have gotten another life, so then he would still be on seven, actually. Or he would be, yeah, he would be still on six, I mean. But that would have been a consideration. I mean, I do like the fact that, that, that Plague Doctor is trying to get the most out of his creatures. He really enjoys combat. You can see that. He wants to attack every turn, but... In some cases, it's just better to, to play a little bit boring. And here we see an all-out attack by Neil. Neil's like, you know what? If I die, I die with glory and honor. So he attacks with everything, his entire army, into the red zone. Ghoul, of course, having that counter because the Mons Goblin died the previous turn. So uh, this is pretty cool. So the Royal, of course, going to tap and destroy something. Take care of the Herloon Minotaur. 
And now the Sengir can destroy something. Yeah, and Neil can wait with the mana until after the defense is chosen, right? And then he can use his soul net. Although I guess he's got to use it now, right? But he wants to keep it probably for the Howl from Beyond, I think. Oh, there's a False Orders. <laughs> oh, I love it. So he can False Orders that the Sengir blocks nothing. I think. Right? And then he can... Oh, now he's going to use the Howl from Beyond. Yeah, this is a classic False Orders Howl from Beyond. I love it, Neil. Oh, that is so cool. You're probably not going to win with it, though. So you can deal four extra points of damage. Six, seven, eight, ten. Oh, he's on one. He's so close to winning it. Oh, he can get him all the way to one. Oh, man. And now, of course, Plague Doctor is going to take the win. But wow, Neil got so incredibly close. That is very, very impressive. I loved seeing this attack by Neil with the false orders and the howl from beyond. Now that is that is old school magic for you. That is why I love these cards so much. Anyway, there's the attack. And this is game number two. Go to Plague Doctor. And I'm super excited because it means we're gonna go to game number three. Game number three here in this best of five match. So we're guaranteed. Another game after this, that's pretty cool. Anyway, Neil, you're starting, of course, after losing a game two, starting with a mountain passing to turn two. Plague Doctor. No turn one play for him. No Mons Goblin Raiders this time. Plague Doctor starting with a swamp. No dark ritual, nothing, just passing back. There's another mountain. Tapping the mountain. Ooh, there's the Mons Goblin Raiders again. So I guess he found that from the top of the deck. 1-1 one, one Vanilla. So that can start dealing damage next turn. Plague Doctor having a forest here. Can he do anything? No Grizzly Bears. Cannot really find the bears. So one card I'm really hoping for still is Camouflage. I want to see Camouflage in action. Oh, Fire Breathing on the Mons Goblin Raiders. I love it. That is so cool. There he goes. Making it a 2-1. Putting Plague Doctor on 18. Oh man, this is super cool. There's a mountain. Tapping three, what are we gonna see? There's a granite gargoyle, two two flyer, and you can pay a red to give it plus O plus one. We saw it of course in game two being very strong for Plague Doctor. Basically that one gargoyle gave him the victory. There's a swamp here, so three lands available now. Earthbind would be quite good on the Gargoyle, by the way, at this moment. Oh, Disintegrate also does the job. Taking care of business, and it's removed from the game. There's the attack, just a one damage. It doesn't have any mana left to pump it up any further with the Fire Breathing. So Plague Doctor having three cards. There's number four. So land number four hitting the board. What can Plague Doctor do? Gonna play, pay four. And there's a giant spider. Yeah, that's actually quite a good blocker here. Like if Neil can find one more mountain, he can pump up the Goblin Raiders to four. Then it would be a problem. But for now, it's a really good blocker. Does Neil maybe have a weakness? Tapping three. Wall of Fire. Okay, really cool to see Wall of Fire in action. I play Wall of Fire in some of my decks. It's quite funny with Sword of the Ages. You can have this fireball effect with those two cards. So Wall of Fire is an 05 wall, and for one red, you can give it plus one, plus O. And it looks like the game is, is really here in the standstill. If uh, both players can just find a, a flyer, although of course Giant Spider has reach, so it can block the flying creatures, but if Plague Doctor can find a flyer, there's a Hill Giant, 3-3 three, three Vanilla. It's not gonna do much on this board. Can easily be blocked with the Wall of Fire. I mean, if Neil can find like Dwarven Warriors, that would be quite good. Can use the Warriors to make the Mons Goblin Raiders unblockable. And then after that, he can pump it up again with the Fire Breathing. That would be quite a nice combination. We do see Neil tapping three, so maybe he has a uh, Dwarven Warriors. Stone Rain, okay, that's quite good, right? You can destroy the Mountain or the Swamp. Gonna cut off a color for Plague Doctor, going for red here. 
Yeah, Stone Rain really good against these uh, multiple color decks. Also, both players don't have any dual lands here, so that makes Stone Rain even better. So Plague Doctor here trying to decide what to do. Six cards in hand, it seems for him. 17 life. Neil's still on the full 20. He's got three cards in hand. So Plague Doctor has more cards, but he also has less mana. And of course, he misses that mountain that just got destroyed by the Stone Rain. So I, I'm just assuming we're going to see a pass here. There's not really a good attack. Oh, he is attacking, though. I guess, though, I was saying there's not a good attack, but that's not true. There is there, there is actually a good attack, which is exactly what Plague Doctor does, because, yeah, the 05 is just an 05. He could pump it to a 1-5 double block. Oh, there's the camouflage! Yes! <laughs> I, was, I was hoping to see this. Okay, let's see what happens. I have no idea how he's going to do this. So he's going to... I guess he's shuffling, like, off camera, and then he's going to turn the, the creature's face down on the battlefield, and Neil just has to guess. So Neil has already chosen what he wants to block, and he, I think he only blocked with Wall of Fire, so that's his only blocking creature. So then he has to choose which of the two the Wall of Fire is going to block, and obviously if you're, if you're Plague Doctor, you hope that it's going to block the Giant Spider, because then you deal two points of damage to the... Uh, or three points of damage, I mean, with the Hill Giant, putting Neil on 17. But I just love the fact that Plague Doctor is playing it out. Yes, it's not... The best moment to play it out, but I so appreciate it because now we get to see Camouflage in action. And probably they're now kind of discussing like, okay, how are we going to do this? So I wonder, are those creatures now? Yeah, they're going to be placed back on the board, face down. Oh, this is so funny. And now Neil doesn't know which is which, so he has to choose without knowing. So I guess it's at random that way. Oh, this is so funny. So he's blocking this creature and he's blocking the other one with the raiders, is he? I, I thought he just said no, but he could also choose to double block one. But then you cannot, no, you cannot kill any of them. So I guess I would not block with the Mons Goblin Raiders here, I think. So just blocking here with the Wall of Fire. Both players probably kind of discussing the, the situation here. He could also choose not to block at all, of course, but I don't think that would be very wise because Wall of Fire has a toughness of 5, so it can easily soak up the damage. So it looks like the Goblin Raiders is going to block something here. So Camouflage slowly goes away. What's going to happen is going to turn the cards over. So there's the whole giant. There's the giant spider. And I guess now we're going to see. Yeah, he is going to take three from the hill giant. Yeah, so I think what happened here is Neil said, I'm going to block with Wall of Fire. I'm not going to block with the Mons Goblin Raiders. And that Wall of Fire became a random block. So this Camouflage... Basically just dealt one extra point of damage. That's what's going on. But it's so cool to see the card in action. And then now let's see what Neil can do in his turn. Or, or maybe Plague Doctor wants to play something out in second main. But Neil already untapped, so I guess not. He's going to draw a card for turn. But really cool. Thank you, Plague Doctor, for playing out Camouflage. I think this was a first on the channel. Super, super nice. And Neil here playing a Mountain for turn, which is relevant because of the Wall of Fire and the Mons Goblin Rage. Yeah, he can attack for five now. Wow. Look at him go. And then if he pumps full, it does mean that Plague Doctor can then again, if he wants to attack with both next turn. Yeah, it's going to pump full. I would do the same. Look at that one little Goblin Raider dealing five points of damage. That's even amount of power going through that Goblin Raider. That's huge. So Plague Doctor dropping to 12, and then we see Neil just passing the turn. Another land found for Plague Doctor, by the way, but not a mountain, which must be uh, annoying for him. 
I mean, Stone Rain is really, really good in this matchup. They did some really good work in game one as well for Neil, where Plague Doctor also had mana issues. I mean, it's tough Singleton playing with, with two colors, let alone three colors. Plague Doctor tapping three. Okay, there's the star again. That's kind of being an old star of the of the games here for Plague Doctor, that prismatic star. That's at least going to enable him to make red mana. I just wish it would say pay one, you would get a mana of any color. Then it would be a nice filter you could use. But for two, it's, it's a little bit too expensive. There is a uh, soul net, by the way, by Neil, who's passing the turn. Plague Doctor drawing a card for turn. What can he do? Four untapped lands. The Prismatic Star. The Hill Giant. And the, uh, the Spider. The Giant Spider. There is a great video made by Ristic Studies about the Giant Spider, by the way. If you haven't seen that one, go check it out. It's beautiful. There's the attack. Oh, he's going in with both. I mean, that is what I like about Plague Doctor's style. He's like going for it. He doesn't care. He's like, I want action. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit back. I want action. Go to the chopper. You know, he's just gonna go and attack full swing. And look at this. Neil doesn't want to sacrifice his goblin. So he takes two, blocks the hill giant. So gonna drop to 17. And of course, now he can swing in again for five with the goblin raiders. Wow, six even. Another red mana found by Neil. And I wonder if Plague Doctor has some kind of trick up his sleeve. Maybe a terror here on the Goblin Raiders. Looks like it. He's going to say, take the damage. Waiting, of course, for Neil to tap. Neil is tapping out fully. Here we go. Oh, there's the terror. Yeah. Really good play here by Plague Doctor. Terrorizing the poor Goblin Raiders. He's scared to death. At least he gains a life from the Soul Net. And now Neil is a little bit in trouble because Plague Doctor can attack with the Spider and the Giant. And there's a red mana as well for Plague Doctor. So now at least he can deal two points of damage. Gonna use the, uh, the star. I mean, the star is doing work, you know? Oh, there's a Dragon Whelp. That is really good. That's gonna fly over the Wall of Fire. Oh man, if you're Neil, you're in trouble. There's the attack for five. The block on, I guess the hill giant gonna take two, drop to 14. Oh, it's not looking good for Neil. He's on 14. He's got to really worry. Needs to take care of that, uh, I guess, dragon whelp first. The whelp is the most dangerous in this situation. Okay, earthbind, that does something. So earthbind is an enchant creature and then target flying creature loses flying. And that also takes two damage. So it's really great against Hypnotic Spectres, for example. But it's not, you know, it's good, I guess. You know, it's going to give you the option to block the Whelp if you want. Who's going to tap four more? Oh, there is the, uh, the big man, the Kelden Warlord, which is now just a 2-2. Two -two. It's not so big, but still it's a cool creature. And now, of course, if you're Plague Doctor, you can still attack with everything because Neil kind of tapped out on the red. So you don't have to worry about any creatures dying. So you can just attack with everything and you'll still be able to put some damage in. And what I really like, by the way, about these Alpha, Beta, Singleton matches, you can already see that is there's a lot of combat action going on. I sometimes feel like, in, in, you know, in the tournament magic, magic scene, the decks are so good and, and, and they're so strategized and, and equipped that you just don't see a lot of combat situations anymore. You, you do see it still, but not as much as in these alpha beta games. It's really nice. So there's the attack into the red zone. Remember that Whelp doesn't have flying because of that earth bind. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter here if he blocks the hill giant or the Whelp. I guess you would block the hill giant and then we just take the damage for now. And then see if Plague Doctor, he could use his Prismatic Star and, of course, his Mountain. He could deal four damage with the Whelp. So maybe you want to block the Whelp instead. Take three from the Hill Giant and two from the Spider. So we see Neil here dropping to 15. Yeah, exactly. So I guess he blocked the Dragon Whelp. This is second main. 
He's going to use a star again. What is he going to play? Ooh, there's a stone giant, 3-4 creature. There are really some big, powerful creatures in the deck of Plague Doctor. And Neil just needs, I mean, just a creature would really help him here. Just a good big creature to block would also kind of beef up the Keldon Warlord, make it a 3-3. Means it could trade, could block the, uh, the whelp. That would be kind of nice. Let's see if he can do something. Now remember, we are playing, I believe, a best of five. So even if he loses this game, whoever wins this game, I should say, we're still going to see uh, another game. So here's the Obscenius Golem. This is really good, by the way. This is a 4-6. So this and makes the Keldon Warlord a 3-3, which is great. But also the 4-6 as a blocker is, is absolutely strong here on this board. And this is going to be a bit problematic for Plague Doctor. One of the things he can still do, though, is use Stone Giant to make, for example, his, his Dragon Whelp flying. And deal some damage that way. But then, you know, if you use... The Stone Giant to give something flying. Remember, it's destroyed at the end of turn. So it is a hefty price. He is going to know he's going to attack with everything. I mean, this Plague Doctor, man. I love your style. <laughs> You're like, whatever. Math is for blockers. I'm going to just whoop, swing in with everything. Into the red zone. Giant Spider, Hill Giant, Dragon Whelp that doesn't fly, and a Stone Giant. Take it, Neil. You decide what you're going to do. Now, remember, Neil is also tapped out, so he doesn't cannot gain any more life from the uh, from the soul net. I think I would do maybe Obsidian's Golem Stone Giant, and then the question is, what are you going to block your Keldon Warlord on? Are you going to, for example, trade it for the Dragon Whelp? I would consider doing that and just blocking the hill giant. Taking two from the spider would go to eight. And then Plague Doctor is going to lose two creatures, assuming he's got nothing else in hand. Because maybe he's got some tricks up his sleeve. Three cards, of course. This is when that camouflage would have been really interesting, by the way. So let's see what he can do. Does he have a false orders? I know both players playing with false orders. Ooh, he's going to tap out. Does he have a howl from beyond? Oh, there's the Howl from Beyond on the spider that's not being blocked. So that means, let's see, five extra points of damage from the Howl. So seven, he would drop to three. I mean, he's still alive. Oh, one actually? So maybe he didn't block something else. So it looks like he's on one. Wow. One little life. But hey, he's got three blockers and Plague Doctor has three creatures and he lost the Stone Giant so he can no longer give anything flying. And I guess he didn't block here with the, with the Keldon Warlord. Maybe. That's why he went to one. I'm not quite sure. But we'll, uh, we'll just assume that the players made a good decision here. So there's the Grey Ogre 2-2. Two -two. And again, man, this is this is good for the warlord. Warlord's now a four-four. Ooh, a weakness. I wonder what he's gonna play the weakness on. So it's minus two, minus one. Yes, putting it on the whelp as well. So the whelp is now and an earth bind and a weakness on it. So it is a um, a one-two creature that you can uh, give plus one plus O. Oh. Actually, an O one creature. Yeah, because it's minus two, minus one. O2 creature. Sorry, I'm kind of messing this up. It's an O2 creature without flying. That he can still pump, you know, he can still give it plus one plus O with the with rat mana. Which could still be relevant somehow, you know, later in the game. Who knows? But Plague Doctor needs to find a way to uh, deal that one last point of damage. I mean, he does have a bolt in his deck. He's going to tap out here. What are we going to see? Ooh, a stream of life. Yeah, that's quite nice. You know, gain five life. Go back up to 17. That's going to give you time. Like, life gain equals, like, extra turns, right? It's going to take longer for your opponent to kill you, meaning you have more chances to draw that one bolt, maybe, that can give you the victory. I'm hoping on more of a, a spicy way to get to the victory than a bolt, but... We'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. Neil now taking his turn. And Neil also knows as long as you're alive, you can still win it. 
Ooh, there's an Orcish Oriflame, so that's going to give all its attacking creatures plus one, plus O. Oh. The cool thing is about the Oriflame that I believe the alpha version of Orcish Oriflame only costs two to cast. There's a little misprint on the casting cost. Look at this going in there with the Keldon Warlord, which is now, of course, a 4-4. He could consider double blocking it here on the Hill Giant and the Spider. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. I mean, the nice thing is it's going to kill the Warlords. The bad thing is he's also going to lose a creature and Neil can gain two life from the Soul Net. So I kind of understand this attack. Also remember the... Oh, of course the... Yeah, it's going to make it a 5-4 because of the Order Flame, but it's not very relevant. Yeah, now we see Neil making some lives. So he's going to go to 2. Could go to 3 if he pays an extra black here for the Hill Giant. Does he want to do that? That's, yeah, he does want to do that. Going to go to 3. I thought maybe he's got another play and needs the black mana for that. But decides to use it. Goes up to 3, which is good. So I can understand this attack here by Neil. You're destroying a creature on the side of your opponent and you're gaining 2 life. And when you're on 1, that's a pretty big deal. Problem is you're still on 3, so you're still in that bolt range. But remember, we are playing Singleton, so there's only one Bolt in uh, Plague Doctor's deck. Going to tap two here, one red, one green. There's an Iron Claw Orc. I believe I also saw an, um, a troll there, an Often Troll. Going to tap two to make a red. Is he going to cast the Often Troll now? There's the Often Troll. Oi, oi, oi. I mean, if you're Plague Doctor, one of the strategies you could use here is try to kind of swarm the board and then attack Neil to deal those final points of damage. The problem, of course, is that soul net that's also uh, gaining Neil life here. If he still would have been on one, Plague Doctor could have uh, could do an all-out attack next turn, but uh, it's a different scenario now with Neil back on three again. And Neil having six lands in total, so maybe uh, if he can find a big creature. Haven't seen Earth, Earth Elemental or Fire Elemental at all in this match so far. Two cards in hand for Neil passing the turn. Plague Doctor taking a turn here. Two cards in hand, it seems. Still has to untap that one star. Look at this going in full. I love, I mean, I love the style of Plague Doctor. I've said it so often. I'm just going to keep saying it because I love what he does, man. Just put everything into the red zone. Whatever. And also kind of putting Neil in a, in, in a difficult position, you know. What are you going to do? Um, but I think if you're Neil, you're not that concerned because you've got your... Well, you're concerned, but if you can survive this combat, you've got really good blocks that you can set up here and you can gain life with the Soul Net. Exactly. Uh, Wall of Fire here, probably going to block the uh, Giant Spider because you've got enough mana to pump the Wall of Fire. Or maybe you want to block the Giant Spider on the uh, Obsanius Golem. I mean, it, it both works. The 2-2, two -two, you could consider trading it for maybe the Dragon Whelp, right? Because then Plague Doctor still needs to pump it up, or the Iron Claw Orc. And then you would take 2 probably from the Often Troll. I mean, you've got to block, of course, 3 creatures because you don't want to die. So there's the Wall of Fire, so he's going to activate it to a 4-5. So I guess that Wall of Fire is blocking the Giant Spider. Giant Spider dies. He's going to gain a life from that. going to go up to four. I wonder what the Obsanius Golem is blocking. Oh, there's a Disintegrate. Yep, that's going to do it. That is going to do it. I really wonder what he was blocking on the Obsanius Golem, but it doesn't matter anymore. Because even if he did, he would still take two from one of the creatures he would drop to two then that huge disintegrate end of the line here so disintegrate winning game number three here for plague doctor but don't go away yet because this is a best of five we've got more magic for you so both players are going to shuffle up and we're going to go to game number four game number four here we go so uh it's two one for plague doctor that means neil on the play here and if Plague Doctor can win this, he's going to win the match best of five. So he's, uh, he's got two games in already, starting with a mountain. Passing the turn back to Neil. So both players don't have a turn one play. There's a Swamp. Are we going to see an Iron Claw Orcs? There's the Iron Claw Orcs 2-2. Two, two. We've seen a lot of that uh, Orc here in this match. It did some damage in game one, I believe. Plague Doctor here playing a Forest. Are we going to finally see that Grizzly Bears? 
on the side of Plague Doctor. There it is, 2-2 two, two Vanilla. Classic, of course. And yeah, as a little Timmy, I was always like, wow, a 2-2 two, two for 2, that is really good. And it's common. It's amazing. There's the attack. Could go for the trade here. Taking the damage instead. Of course, Grizzly Bear being slightly better than the Iron Claw Orc. Talking about 2-2s, two, there's another one. Gray Ogre, a 2-2 two, two for 3 mana. It's got a nice little flavor text about a uh, Ogre Philosopher on it, by the way. There's the attack with the 2-2. Two, two. And I think if you're Neil, you could just take two, go to 18, next turn swing in. He is going to take the trade, though. So Gray Ogre down and uh, the Grizzly Bear is down. There's another Swamp. What are we going to see here in the second main? Dark Ritual. Are we going to see another Sengir Vampire? Oh, again, Sengir. I believe he did this in game two as well. I mean, this is huge. A 4-4 flying creature. A big problem for Neil. I mean, and it has flying, and it's a 4-4. I mean, that is really tough. And it's black, so you kind of play a terror on it. This is problematic for Neil. You know, maybe if he's got a hell from beyond in, in his hand, he could attack with the Iron Claw Orc. And if it blocks, he could make that trade. Fire Breathing, I like this even better. Wow. <laughs> this is so cool. And there's a Drudge. So this is quite nice. He's, he's now signaling to Plague Doctor. You know what? You can attack me for four. But on the uh, Crackback, you're going to take a lot of damage as well. So if you're Plague Doctor, you kind of have to make some, uh, some tough decisions now. He is going to attack here. Going to put Neil on 16. Let's see if he has a follow-up play. Probably uh, needs uh, looking for a decent blocker here. Tapping three. Fireball, okay, that can take care of the Iron Claw Orc. This is great for Plague Doctor. Killing the Orc here, and he can just keep swinging in for four every single turn, so it's looking good for him. I believe only two cards in hand for Neil, by the way. Now one card in hand for Neil. Four cards in hand for Plague Doctor. Okay, he is finding that Earthbind. That's great, because Earthbind means that um, the Vampire is going to lose flying, so now uh, Neil can block with the Drudge. So this is a pretty important play from Neil. Another Swamp here for Plague Doctor. So four lands for him. Tapping four. What are we going to see? There's a Hill Giant. So next turn, Plague Doctor can start swinging in again with Hill Giant and Singer Vampire dealing some damage. Ooh, that's a pretty bad top deck from Neil. It's kind of land flooded this match. Finding another Swamp. Six uh, lands now in total. No cards in hand for Neil. That's the biggest problem. Look at Plague Doctor. Still four cards in hand. And of course, the two creatures swinging in with both. Blocking with the Drudge. Meaning he still takes three from the Hill Giant. So uh, Neil probably going to drop to 13. Then he has to kind of hope that Plague Doctor isn't going to play out more creatures in second main. It looks like he is going to play out more creatures though. Okay, there is a Royal Assassin. Not that big of a deal at the moment for Neil. Could have been worse for him. He's going to draw his card for turn. Oh, another land. That is unfortunate. Come on, Neil. I wanted to get. I wanted to go to a 2-2. Two, two. I want to see game 5. I love these decks. It's so cool to see these classic creatures. But it looks like Neil is just not finding the right cards. And yeah, Plague Doctor has some big creatures in his deck. Attacking now, probably going to block with the Dredge again on the Sengir. Going to take three from the Hill Giant, drop to ten. Yeah, that is tough. Neil drawing a card for turn. Going to pay two. Going to pay three. Okay, three red. Stone Rain, yeah. I mean, Stone Rain's good, but when you're behind, is that really the card you're looking for? Yeah, probably going to go for the Forest here. I mean, it's, it's something, but you'd rather have like a Disintegrate to take care of uh, the Sengir Vampire, for example. There's the attack again. Yeah, if you're Plague Doctor, it's quite simple here. Just to turn those two creatures sideways and deal three a turn. Neil already dropping to seven. I believe now the Hill Giant has dealt nine points of damage. I mean, that's the most damage I've ever seen a Hill Giant do, actually. Tapping four. There's an Orcish Oriflame. Again, 
like this, this happens to me a lot in Magic that you draw the cards in the wrong order. That's happening to Neil right now. You're finding lands, you're finding Stone Rain, you're, you're finding your Aura Flame. You don't want to. You don't want those cards. There's the attack, and this is quite nice for Plague Doctor because, yeah, Neil can block the Royal, but then he dies, so he has to block the Sangir. Take four in total, drop to three. And now we need something. This probably is last turn. Or do we see a Howl from Beyond here from Plague Doctor? Yep, there's the Howl winning the game by howling the Royal Assassin. <laughs> Applause from Neil. These are great guys, true lovers of Magic the Gathering. And Plague Doctor winning here this uh, best, of, uh, best of five match with 3-1 uh, from Neil. Congratulations and thank you guys for showing these beautiful decks to the channel. And that was the episode for today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. It's really beautiful to see these Singleton Alpha Beta decks. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more matches like this and I'll, I'll try to organize it. You know, I'll do my best. And uh, both of these players are patrons of the channel, by the way. So thank you, Plague Doctor and Neil, for supporting the show. Now, if you want to become a patron as well, it's quite simple. All you have to do is go to patreon, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and there you can find out how you can become a patron. It already starts for just $1 a month, and for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord, and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?